We are here with Go Solar, and I'm here with Steve Peters of Life Cycle Building Group. Awesome. So we're at the Eco Experience at the State Fair, and uh, as we know here, that this is where all the exhibits for anything solar, sustainability is here. So that's great. So Steve, what are you actually doing? What your company do? Life Cycle Building Group was formed about a year and a half ago. It was uh, brought some commercial construction people together with some business people, some financing, and some solar folks to try to put together uh, a commercial solar uh, company. Okay, awesome. And you know a lot about solar and assembling. Um, have you seen solar grow in the interest of the average consumer, and is it practical here in the United States? That was probably the first challenge that we had to undertake, especially in the commercial market. You know, having dealt with businesses for 26 years, you know, they're pretty much bottom line people. So if you can't prove the business case first and be able to go in there and tell them, you know, this is what your return is going to be, they don't even bother contacting them because you're just going to get tossed out of their office. So we spent uh, an incredible amount of time pulling together all the rebates and all the information that exists in any fashion we possibly could and packaging it up and really uh, a year or so ago at least in the commercial space and even in the residential space the, the the payback was extended so much that we were really having a pretty tough time trying to penetrate that market um, about March of this year with some rebates through some of the utilities and the investment tax credits and the stuff that the government is offering that really turned around so as of March we've we've really had a great message it's it's good for Minnesota as good as it's been out in California and New York and other places for a while so it's finally I think we're on track awesome. you know? so what are the what are the the myths or some of the things people are afraid of about solar that you that you that you see from the market it's the first one that you almost always hear is they're going off of old numbers so you know the common myth is it's a 30-year payback or it's a 20-year payback and um, and that you've got to have batteries is another one in order for it to work because they just don't understand how the solar connects to the grid and how that's run between their utility and their house or their business and such so it takes a little bit of an education for them to bring current on the on the economics of it which are very good right now I mean there's no guarantee they're going to be like that forever so right now is a very good time and then also how it connects to the grid and um, and how you don't need all that battery and sort of stuff. You know? yeah, exactly. So what do you see the future of solar now? Well, I, you know, I've heard a presentation or two that kind of highlighted this a little bit too. I mean, right now, just to give you a sort of a profile, Germany's got about 30 uh, uh, 30 percent or so of all the solar on the planet, and they've got about half the sun as we do here in Minnesota. And it's just a, it's just a question of a government who got behind it and a country who whose all their resources had to be imported that were felt, feeling like they were being held a little bit hostage. So I think with the political will behind it and businesses starting to get a little bit smarter, we're starting to feel that sort of same kind of pressure and that same kind of commitment. And if that happens, then it's just going to be great. And it's certainly a, a, in the best interest of our country to be as independent from others as we possibly can in any of those fashions, whether it be you know, oil or gas or whatever. So. So last question, to get where Germany's at right now, what does United States have to do? It needs, a, it's kind of started out in the right path in the last year or so with these investment tax credits. And what we tend to do, which is what we can't do, is we get a new cycle of senators and congressmen that come through every two years or so and then they change their minds so what we get is we we get a little bit of impetus kind of going and everybody starts to understand the rules and they start to proceed with it and then we roll over some new political folks and they change the whole rules now it isn't quite the same again so it's start stop start 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 stop and yet the macroeconomic components of this that makes it really important for us aren't changing they're even getting worse so I think what we need to do is we need to keep some sort of a political focus in the right direction and kind of a consistent path down that road so that, you know, again, we're not just half, half foot in, half foot out, and then realize too late that we should have been much further down the road, you know, Thank 10 you. years from now. So Awesome. Thank you, Steve. You're very welcome.